Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video, I'm going to plant two container-grown shrubs. In fact, they are dwarf rhododendrons. So let's get to it. Actually, I need to get changed. That's better. Let's go. I shall be showing my technique of planting container-grown shrubs. I have a few tips to help you plant at the right depth, with the right orientation, and a little technique to make sure everything goes smoothly. Container-grown shrubs can be planted at any time, but I would recommend spring or autumn. The advantage of autumn is the soil is still warm, they can develop some new roots and settle down before winter, and they won't have to contend with the hot sun and drought conditions of summer. This is where I'm going to plant them, in the bed that already has some azaleas. Azaleas and rhododendrons are very similar shrubs and go well together. The first thing to do is simply place the plant where you want to plant it, stand back and see how it looks. Decide which way round the plant will look best in the bed. This is where I have decided to place these two little rhododendrons. They will make a nice display in spring along with the azaleas. I'm going to plant them in a mix of leaf mould and ericaceous compost. I make leaf mould every year from the leaves that have fallen in autumn and always add leaf mould when I plant a new shrub. Leaf mould adds a certain amount of nutrients but also and primarily it retains moisture so the new roots don't dry out. I make the mix about 50% leaf mould and 50% normal compost. Today, as I'm planting rhododendrons, I'm going to add ericaceous compost rather than normal compost, as rhododendrons like the soil to be more on the acid side, and ericaceous compost is ideal for acid-loving plants. I don't add any fertiliser when planting in autumn, I don't want them to put on any new growth that may be damaged in the winter. We can fertilise them then in the spring. Don't these dahlias look nice? They are moon fire and I'm really pleased with them this year. And of course the bees love them. This is where I'm going to plant them, amongst some other azaleas. The first thing I do is put the container in water, as I want the whole of the root ball to be moist. It is difficult to get water right into the root ball after it is planted, so before you plant it is the best time to get it nice and moist all the way through. You can leave it in the water for half an hour or while you prepare the bed. Don't be afraid of getting the root ball totally soaked. Dig a hole about twice the size of the root ball. Put in some of the compost mix into the bottom of the hole. Mix it in with the existing soil. Place the container in the hole, adjust it so that it is facing the way you want it to face, and make sure that the plant is sitting at the height you want. If it's too low, simply add soil, and if it's sitting too high, take some soil away. Generally speaking, you want the plant to be at the same level as it was in the pot. If you have heavy soil, you will want to have the plant level or slightly higher than the surrounding soil, so it doesn't sit in a puddle. Backfill with a small amount of compost,
firm this compost round the container. Remove the shrub from the container by tapping the sides or squeezing a little bit. And tap the top of the container so that it falls away. If there is a thick root ball, you may want to loosen some of the roots. Simply place the shrub in the hole that you created and backfill with the rest of the compost. Finish by firming the compost round the shrub. Water really well so the whole area is soaked and you can also check that the water drains away. Water again in a few days if it has been sunny with no rain, but as it's autumn you shouldn't have to worry about watering too much. And of course, don't water in freezing temperatures. Make sure next spring and summer it does not go dry. New young plants are susceptible to dry conditions as they haven't had time to send down long roots. And there we have the shrub in the right place, the right orientation, nicely watered, I'm just trimming back the other shrubs a little bit to give the new shrub room to grow. Let's quickly plant the second shrub. When you're digging the hole you may find roots from other shrubs and indeed trees in the way. You can leave these other roots and maybe plant amongst them, but I tend to cut and pull these roots away. Clean up afterwards so the whole job is completed. It's always exciting planting new shrubs, creating anticipation for the season to come. This is the azalea bed last April and now there will be two new little dwarf rhododendrons flowering their heads off next year. 
We've now planted two small, in fact, they're dwarf rhododendrons, and here they are. One is a butter-colored one, and the other one is a pink one, which will match the beautiful pink one here, which is why I put it over there away from it, so it wouldn't be um, swamped by this larger one. So this will grow to about here, so that's completed what I call the D-bed. We've got the tamarisk rising above it, giving some shade, but uh, dapple shade. So there's plenty of sunshine coming in here and plenty for azaleas. So we've now got an azalea and rhododendron bed. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm in my scroffs. I'm gardening. It's blowing a gale today. It's quite dark. So let's see how that... <laughs> It's blowing a gale today. We've got the trees blowing in the wind, which I quite like. It's about 15 degrees centigrade, perfect for doing the garden. It's just coming into autumn now. Our autumn lasts quite a long time because some of the plants will start to turn in October, but the absolute peak of the autumn in England, and in fact, most of Britain, is, is indeed the first week of November, but it depends on the year. I'm really pleased that you've joined me today on something a little bit different where I'm actually doing some planting and I really hope to see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.